So I found out this morning that our paper is finally accepted. So, <laughs> so we have it. I'm Jennifer Shepard and I am a professor here at Gonzaga University. I teach a number of chemistry classes. Organic chemistry is my specialty. When I came to Gonzaga, after my PhD, I needed a research topic that would work well with undergraduates. And so there was this new molecule, rhodoquinone, which had very little research done on it. We're very interested in its biosynthesis and using it as a target for antiparasitic and antimicrobial drugs. So it's unique to organisms that must live in low oxygen environments. So when I started at Gonzaga, I started working on the rhodoquinone biosynthesis project without knowing, I guess, the big picture so much of the work and what kind of impact it could have. And in 2002, I took a trip to Ghana in West Africa, and I was actually able to see firsthand the effects of some of these like parasitic infections on people that don't have access to clean water and soil or treatments for parasitic infections. And so that made the research real to me. So I could actually see the impact. One of the issues is that there are very few antiparasitic drugs available. There's only been three developed, I think, since the 1970s. And so the parasites are gaining resistance to the current drugs. And so we need new targets. And this is a very unique target. So this collaborator from University of Toronto, we published a, a paper together back in 2020. And they are a very big research group with multiple graduate students and postdocs, and they can get a lot of work done very quickly. And by working with us, they now have enough knowledge about rhodoquinone biosynthesis to design and test new antiparasitic drug candidates but they don't have the standards and instrumentation to actually test if the drugs are effective. Now, we do have that expertise at Gonzaga, and so they just sent us a large shipment of worm samples uh, that were treated with 10 potential drug candidates. And so here, with Gonzaga students, we're gonna extract the worms and actually see what kind of quinone levels there are, so we'll see if the drug candidates were successful. So we're hoping to see reduction of rhodoquinone, and then we know that we've actually targeted the rhodoquinone biosynthetic pathway and perhaps found a drug that might be useful that can go into testing. It's pretty awesome feeling to know that we that we might make a big impact and it is I mean it is a very small field so rhodoquinone biosynthesis is not a huge a huge field and we've done most of the work on it so far I recently wrote a review article on rhodoquinone biosynthesis that covered the last 60 years since its discovery and about 80% of that work was actually done at Gonzaga with our undergraduates over the last two decades. I think it's pretty remarkable how fast our research has evolved since new genetic, biochemical, and analytical tools have become available to us, and these exciting new collaborations have been established. The fun thing about science is, I mean, anytime you answer a question, you usually have five new questions to explore, so we just never keep running out of questions. I tend not to give up until, until I get an answer, and that's just kind of my personality. 